Welcome ladies, thank you for joining me. Today we want to look at who a wise woman is because the world is defining wise woman in their own terms. We want to be that wise woman that the Bible is defining because we want to align our lives to that of the Bible and not that of the world. And so we want to see what it means to be a wise woman. Many people believe that when the, the woman is controlling and she is the one making things happen in the womb, then she is a very powerful woman. And that this has created this competition between the husband and the wife. Instead of the wife submitting, the world says, rule, lead. Instead of the wife being at the place where God has put her and fixing her eyes on the role that God has given to her, she finds herself playing the role of her husband and she expects her husband to do her own role. So there are many women who are so bitter that why is my husband not helping me at home? Why is my husband not cooking? Like I heard a woman say on YouTube, that if he can eat, then he can go for the shopping. And the way she was saying it in a very rude way. And we are sinning against God. We are Christian women. We cannot align ourselves with the doctrine of the world. The Bible says we should not do what the heathen is doing. Learn not the way of the heathen. And so what is wisdom? James chapter 14 is telling us that there is this kind of wisdom which promotes bitterness in the home. This kind of wisdom which promotes envying where the wife is envying the position of the husband. The husband has been put as the head of the home by God Almighty and he puts him as the head because in creation he is the senior brother. He is the senior right there. God made the man first and then he made his wife for him. And so the man has been put as the head of the woman right from creation and it cannot change. No matter the competition, no matter what we do, it cannot change. Many women are striving for nothing. The husband wants them to be at home. The husband wants her to just concentrate, focus on raising the children. But because of this competition, she wants to go and work. No, 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 you can't keep me at home. Do you want me to be your slave? I am not a slave. I have done my master's and you think I should be at home? Yes, you've done your master's. But once you marry, you have come under the rulership of your husband. God told Eve that he shall rule over you. And when you are resisting this rule, you are resisting the authority of your husband. You are resisting the authority of God. If you are not receiving your husband, you are pushing Jesus Christ away from you. And so that is the reason why God wants us to learn to submit. That is why God does not want us to go by the ways of the heathen. And what I'm talking about today is not for everyone, but it's for the heavenly minded Christian. The Christian woman who doesn't want to be disappointed on the judgment day? So sisters, let's read James chapter 3, verse 14, downwards. But if ye have bitter envy and strive in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. If you are looking at your husband and thinking, he is not buying me these things. Why is it that this, my friend, just received a flashy car for her birthday and for my husband? Nothing. 
Even when it comes home, come on, hug. I don't get it. Why is my husband like this? And you are bitter in your heart because you are comparing your husband in your marriage to what you have been watching in the soap operas, what you have, you have been listening to among your friends, and you are comparing your marriage with their marriage. The Bible says those that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. Those who are comparing their lives against the lives of other people are not wise. And you have gotten this bitterness inside of you because you are comparing your marriage to other people's marriage because you are expecting your husband to do things that he is not doing. And he's not doing these things because it's not his role. He's not washing the dishes because it's not his role. He is not cleaning the house. He's not cooking for you because that is not his role. Yet he can do it to show his love to you. But if he's not doing it, you don't go into bitterness. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. This kind of wisdom, this idea that has come to you that I, I can't stay at home. Why does my husband want to keep me at home? No, he goes to work. I also go to work. Because I want to be self-reliant. I don't want to be asking my husband for everything. And so I want to work. And these ideas, mostly we get them around us. We get them when people are talking about it. Then we also hear it and we also want to buy into it. God is saying this kind of wisdom did not come from him. No, 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 no. This kind of wisdom that will not make you to submit to the rulership of your husband did not come from God. He says it is earthly, it is sensual, and it's demonic. It is demonic. Let's go on. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. No wonder many homes, many Christian homes, there is always quarrel. Why? Because there is competition. The wife does not want to submit. The wife is looking at her husband to come and do her role while she takes over the role of her husband. The wife is expecting her husband to do some things that another husband is doing somewhere. The wife wants to change her home to somebody's home. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. I have also done this before where I've, I've been comparing things and I'm thinking, but this is not how it was done from the marriage that I have witnessed. So why is this? not happening like that and then you get a reply this is not that home the man that was in charge of that home is different from the man who is in charge of your marriage your husband is different from your father so you do not expect your husband to be like your father no. So for where envy and strive is, there is confusion and every evil work because we compare our marriages to other people's marriage, because we expect our husbands to do things that, that, that they are not doing. We are faced with quarrel and strife and even sometimes divorce. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. A woman who is wise before the Lord, a woman who is wise according to the Bible is a woman of purity. A woman who is righteous, a woman who has pure thoughts. She's not thinking evil for her husband. The Bible says she will do him good all the days of her life. She is always thinking of good things for her husband, not evil. She's not sitting there and being bitter against her husband and saying, mm, what kind of marriage am I in? Oh God, I really regret. I regret marrying this man. God says if you are doing that, you are not a pure woman. You are not righteous. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. 
then peaceable. The wise woman is a peaceful woman. She is not the one that is shouting and bickering and nagging and, and calling her husband names and disrespecting her husband and criticizing her husband. She is not like that. She is gentle and easy to be entreated. This wise woman, even when she is angry and the husband says, I'm sorry, my darling, I'm sorry. She's like, it's okay. And she is off smiling again. You know, she was very angry. But the husband says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry is enough for her. She will not go on. Or tomorrow or the next day or three weeks after, she's still talking about it. No, I'm sorry. She says it's okay. And that is it. She won't bring it up again. She is full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. When you see this woman smiling inside of her, she's smiling. When you see that she is angry, you will know that she is angry. And when you apologize, she forgives. Sincerely, she has forgiven. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Ladies, this is the word of God to us today. Let's adopt the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of the world. Let's cling on to the Lord and be godly women. The Bible says, the woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Let's fear the Lord. Don't compare your marriage with another person's marriage. Don't expect your husband to act like your father or your friend's husband. Your husband is unique in all his ways. Allow him to rule the home and back him with prayer. And may the Lord bless our homes in the name of Jesus Christ.